Hey everyone, so not too long ago, I came across this new invention called the Everyday Calendar. It was built by Simone Nietz, and its purpose was to help a person maintain good daily habits in order to help them stick to their New Year's resolution. Simone had initially built this in order to get herself to meditate every day. So to keep track of her progress, she would light up each day on the calendar after meditating, and through small incremental improvements, she was able to reach her goal. Well, kind of. You can read more about it on her Kickstarter page. Now, I haven't really tried creating New Year's resolutions in the past, but this year I decided to give it a try. So for the year 2020, I want to upload more videos and hopefully have a little bit more success here on YouTube. So I've set a goal to work on my YouTube channel every single day. This can be anything from developing a new project to editing a video. When I started uploading videos back in 2019, my effort over time was far from consistent. For example, when I worked on the neural network video, I went hardcore for two weeks straight and then after that, I was so exhausted that I only had enough energy to make one more video before the year came to a close. And what's really disappointing is that I couldn't make a follow-up video on the hand sign detection project like I said I would. Sorry about that, by the way. For those of you who don't know me, I'm currently a senior in high school, which means I've had a lot of college applications to work on, but that also means that at this point, I've pretty much finished those applications so I can go back to making these videos. This year, I'm hoping to manage my time more effectively by just putting in a reasonable amount of work every single day rather than overwhelming myself in a short period of time. I would find something like the everyday calendar to be extremely useful, but the concept is so simple that I figured that instead of buying one of these, I would much rather prefer to build it myself. However, I don't have a lot of money to buy all the electronic components and the tools for construction, but then I realized that instead of building the physical device, it would be much easier to just create a digital version of it. So for the past couple of weeks, I've been working on a graphical Python application that displays a calendar that somewhat resembles Simone's version. This was my first time creating a graphical user interface in Python, so I had to teach myself to kinter along the way. But in the end, I was able to create a fully functional digital version of the everyday calendar. I'm pretty happy with the results and I enjoyed the whole process of putting it all together. So I'm going to share my program on GitHub and in this video, I'm just going to describe the whole code development process. I started off by planning out the layout of the calendar to make sure that everything would fit on screen. This involved determining font sizes, spacing between elements, and the dimensions of all the hexagons. The orientation of the hexagons I drew are different from Simone's because I needed the heights to be smaller. But I think this still looks pretty decent. Once I had organized everything, I began working on the actual structure of the application by incorporating some object orientation. In this line of code, you can see that I'm creating a class called Calendar, which inherits from Tekinter's Canvas class. A canvas in Tekinter allows you to draw stuff like shapes in your window. If you create a child class of Canvas, you can add more functionality to create a sort of custom Canvas object that is specialized for a specific purpose. In our case, we want our canvas to be able to show all the days of the calendar and light them up when appropriate. First, I displayed each day using this add day method, but then I had to figure out how to illuminate each day, which turned out to be a little harder than I expected. Every day on the calendar is made up of a polygon and some text, and the idea was that when you clicked on the hexagon, both items would change color. I was going to make every polygon clickable, but that meant I needed at least 365 different methods to control the illumination of each day. But it turned out that there is this method, which returns the idea of any hexagon I click on, and I could use that to change the color of the outline. However, I needed some way to link the polygon and the text together as a pair, because I wanted the number to light up too. So I tried doing some research on how to combine widgets, but I couldn't find anything really useful. Eventually though, I came up with the idea of using unique tags for each pair of items. That way, when a polygon was clicked on, the illuminate method would find other items with the same tag and change the color of those as well. Now because all the tags were unique, I thought that I would have to bind each one to the same illumination method using a for loop, but then I realized that I didn't need to. You see, I was going to design my calendar so that you can only light up the current day. That meant only one polygon had to be clickable, so I only needed to bind the illuminate method to whichever tag corresponded to that current day. So, problem solved. In my for loop, I generated a new day tag indicating the exact date for each day that was being added in the loop. Then, in the add day method, I extracted the day number from the tag for the text item, and then for both the polygon and the text, I set the tags equal to the same uniquely generated date tag. After that, I binded the tag of the current date 
to a method called illuminate, which I define later in the code. Current date follows the same format as the date tags I'm using. So if today is January 14, 2020, current date is a string that looks like this. And the polygon text pair representing the 14th of January will have a tag identical to this string. Anyways, in the illuminate method, I find the ID of the polygon closest to the mouse click, and then I find the ID of the text with the same tag as the polygon. Once I got those IDs, I use item config to change the colors, and as you can see here, it works perfectly. Now, before we go any further, we need to fix the length of each of the months because right now, each month has 31 days. So I created a list containing the size of each month and used a private method to determine the size of February depending on the year. That method looks like this. Basically, if the year is divisible by 4, then it's a leap year, unless it's divisible by 100, in which case you would skip the leap year. But if the year is divisible by 400, you don't skip. So the year 2020 is a leap year because it's divisible by 4 and not by 100. The year 2000 is also a leap year because even though it's divisible by 100, it is also divisible by 400. However, the year 1900 is divisible by 100 and not 400, so it is not a leap year. Anyways, moving on. All I had to do was modify my for loop so that for each month, it would loop a specific number of times to add the appropriate number of days. The next thing we want to do is store data about which days are illuminated and which are not. So I have this instance variable called illumination values, and to update it, we can modify the add day method to find the correct index in the list and change its value to one. Of course, we need to store this on a separate file so that when we close the program, the data can still be retrieved later on. To do this, I imported pickle, which is used to generate a pickle file from a Python object. Later, you can reload this data into Python from the same file. In add day, I called a method to update the calendar data file, but of course I hadn't defined it yet, so I did that above. I also created this other method called load calendar data, which will be used to reload the last illumination values. In update calendar data, I simply opened the pickle file with write permissions, dumped the illumination values list into the file, and then closed it. In load calendar data, I try opening the pickle file with read permissions, but if it fails, that means the file doesn't exist yet. So in the accept block, I created a new pickle file with write permissions, dumped new illumination values filled with zeros, close the file, and then reopen it with read permissions. Then you use pickle.load to read the values and return as a list. Once I had a method that could reliably retrieve data, I used it to initialize illumination values. Further down, I passed a specific value from this list as a parameter to add day. And then I modified add day so that I can set the color of each polygon and text item when the application opens. Now you can see that when I run the program, load up the current day, and then close out, a pickle file gets generated. And if I rerun the application, it remembers that I lighted up the 17th of January. And that's pretty much all there is to this calendar application. If I want to light up the previous days, all I have to do is change the date on my computer and light up each day one by one. Just kidding. I wouldn't make you guys do something that tedious. Obviously, you can write a Python script to generate a pickle file with the desired illumination values. And the code is really simple. First, this just initializes the list with all zeros, then it fills everything up to yesterday with ones, and then finally, it goes through a list of missed dates and sets them to zero. If I run this script, you can see a new pickle file is created, and if I run the main application script, all the days before the 17th are lit up. I can still light up today, and when I restart the application, everything up to today has been illuminated. Just for fun, I created this little icon using GIMP, and after exporting it to the project folder, I set the root window icon using icon bitmap, and now you can see my custom icon displayed in the upper left hand corner. You may also want to have an exe file which will run the application. Even though Python is not compiled to a binary file, there is this program called PyInstaller which can take Python code and figure out how to create an exe file. However, the documentation isn't very great, so I took a shortcut. I created a directory containing all the necessary files, and I made the C++ program which simply uses command prompt to run the Python script. I can compile this using G++ which creates an executable that feels like a normal application. Finally, you can make an easily accessible shortcut on your desktop with the custom icon just like I have here, and it should all work flawlessly. So I'm going to try to use this in order to motivate myself to consistently make progress over the course of the year. If you're looking to do the same thing, but you don't want to spend money, then you can download my files from GitHub for free. 
and set everything up on your computer. My digital version does have some advantages over the real version. For instance, it adjusts the number of days in February depending on the year. You can not light up multiple days once you open it. And if you have it on a laptop, it's also portable. But there are good reasons to buy Simone's calendar. The main one being that if you have a physical display mounted in your house, it will serve as a constant reminder of your goals. So if you're the type of person who wants to have something tangible, then you should totally support Simone's Kickstarter. However, if you just want to be able to visualize your progress and you're perfectly satisfied with lighting up each day just by clicking on it, then you have the option to use my program. It's all a matter of preference. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the comment section. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.